My next guest says addressing the federal government's nefarious spending sprees is his number one concern. And he believes it should be the number one concern of any potential presidential candidate in 2012. Joining us from Iowa, where several GOP presidential hopefuls have convened, including the father of my next guest for tonight's debate on Fox, is Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul. Senator Paul, I know it's busy and hectic where you are. Thank you for joining us, and as always, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. Can we ever wean the government off of debt? Can we change the culture in Washington so that debt is unnatural rather than business as usual? Well, not with this crew in the White House. I think we need new leadership. I think we need to ask Timothy Geithner to go home. He's done a poor job. But I think what you're going to find out tonight in this debate is that there are no, some new leaders. There's some leaders with proven records. And, you know, I'm very proud of my father for his record. I'm very proud of him for campaigning on bringing back economic liberty and personal liberty and saying that they're two sides of the same coin. The, the Republican Party, uh, disappointingly, sadly, at least in the past 20 years or so, and certainly in the Bush years and continuing now, seems to be divided over those points. You and your father and the Republicans who joined you and him to vote against the debt deal that let the president borrow another $2.4 trillion are in favor of human liberty and in favor of sound money and in favor of small government. But not all Republicans feel that way. I suspect, and I think you agree with me, we're going to hear both sides of that coin tonight. We're going to hear small government republicanism from your father and big government business as usual from just about all the others. Well, I always tell people it, it isn't enough just to be a Republican. The Republican Party is an empty vessel unless we imbue it with values. We have to believe in something and we have to be for something. And too often in the past, we've nominated Republicans who were for the bank bailouts, Republicans who were for new entitlement programs like the Medicare prescription plan, Republicans who were for doubling the size of the Department of Education. Some of us, like Ron Paul, have been around long enough to say, you know what, we believe, as Ronald Reagan did, that we shouldn't even have a Department of Education. So that's what this is about. It's about whether you want big government conservatives or people who truly believe in the marketplace and believe in individual liberty. Um, there have been some calls from amongst the Democrats, and I know you're probably not getting these phone calls, for the Congress to return and the president to do something. If the Congress does return in August, something I think is unlikely, either at the call of the president or an agreement of, the, of congressional leaders, what, if anything, would you have it do to address this financial crisis that we now face. Stated differently, Senator Paul, is it the role of government to try and affect the outcome of these rapid stock market swings up and down, up and down every day? Well, we could if they would uh, listen to us. You know, we said we would raise the debt ceiling if they balanced the budget gradually over seven to eight years, but that was way too radical for them in Washington. They think. The Tea Party is extreme because we were promoting balancing the budget gradually over seven to eight years. Cutting one percent, one penny out of every dollar was somehow too radical for them. But the marketplace has given them a vote of no confidence. Down 2,000 points, the stock market's voting against the presidency of this, this current president. I, I think that really they need to wake up and realize that this is becoming a failed presidency. Are you as frustrated as I am and a lot of people watching the show with the idea of the super congress or the super committee or whatever you want to talk it, that some talk, call it, that somehow 12 people appointed by congressional leaders can meet in secret and deliver a piece of legislation to the Congress and the Congress can't debate it, can't amend it, can't follow its own rules to address it, it simply has to vote it up or down? I mean, wh where is that in the Constitution? Well, and here's the other problem, is we have so many rules we ignore already. We're supposed to produce a budget every year. And we haven't had a budget in two years. We're supposed to match our appropriations bills with the budget bill. How do we do that if there's no budget bill? We don't obey the rules we already have in place, and that's why I think we have to amend the Constitution and have a balanced budget amendment, because Congress has proved themselves to be untrustworthy, and I think we really will have to amend the Constitution before we have true budgetary reform here. Senator Rand Paul, it's a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us.